So we're going to have a look at catalysts. And we're going to start with um, a situation where we may have come across um, a catalyst before. Um, and that is in a car. So we know hopefully that cars um, produce gases from their exhausts. And one of the gases that they produce from their exhausts are, is carbon monoxide. Now carbon monoxide is bad for us. Carbon monoxide is a toxic pollutant gas and we don't want that going into the atmosphere. So cars have something in them that's going to stop that doing that. And it's located near the exhaust and it's called this. A catalytic converter. And what a catalytic converter is, is a mesh of some metals. Um, metals like platinum and rhodium and palladium. And we're just going to think about one of those at the moment. And that is the element platinum. Um, what platinum does is it takes the exhaust gases that contain carbon monoxide and it helps the carbon monoxide react much more quickly with oxygen in the air and it turns it m very quickly into carbon dioxide. Now that is a reaction that will actually happen by itself. Carbon monoxide will react with oxygen in the air and turn into carbon dioxide but it will do it very very slowly and we need it to happen much quicker so that we are not producing carbon monoxide from our car exhausts but instead carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide isn't great but it isn't toxic. And platinum is acting as a catalyst. The platinum catalyst speeds up the chemical reaction. It isn't used up itself and it isn't permanently changed but it is involved in the reaction. It helps speed it up. So a catalyst So that's what a catalyst does, and it's important to note that it is involved in the reaction. But it does, does not get permanently changed. So it does not get permanently changed or used up in the reaction. And if we think about it, our catalytic converter doesn't run out. It can be used over and over and over again. Sometimes gets poisoned a little bit by um, impurities, but as far as we're concerned, it doesn't get used up. It can be used over and over and over again. It's involved in the reaction, but it's not getting permanently used up or changed. Um, another example of a catalyst um, is iron in something called the Harbour process. Now the Harbour process is a really important reaction that allows us to make ammonia which is a very very important chemical. Um, ammonia is used and has lots of uses particularly in making fertilizers. Um, and the iron helps nitrogen and hydrogen react together much more quickly than they would normally do to make ammonia. So let's think about how they work. So we know that a reaction happens when two particles collide with lots of energy. Now here are my two reactant particles A and B and they're not moving very fast. So when they hit each other, no reaction happens. 
here's A and B moving much faster. So when these hit each other, they do react. And we say the minimum energy that they need to react is called the activation energy. And we've seen that on a graph before. It's this hump on the graph. The energy that's needed in order for this to react is shown by how high the hump is away from the reactant lines, reactant line. And we call that the activation energy. So particles have to have enough energy, enough energy greater than the activation energy in order for a reaction to take place. So A and B, which don't have much energy in this first example because they're moving quite slowly, they don't have the energy to overcome the activation energy, so they collide with each other and just bounce off and no reaction takes place. Whereas this example of A and B have lots of energy, they're moving fast towards each other. When they hit each other, a reaction does take place and products are produced. Now, what a catalyst does is lower the activation energy needed for the reaction. So this dotted line here represents the activation energy with a catalyst. So it lowers the activation energy. So this solid line here is the activation energy without a catalyst. This dotted line is the activation energy with a catalyst. So let's summarize that. A catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway. This reaction pathway has a lower activation energy. That means more collisions are successful. And that will then, then lead to a faster rate of reaction. Okay, so the key definitions, the key ideas we've looked at today is what a catalyst is, and that's over here. A catalyst speeds up a chemical reaction, but it isn't so it doesn't get permanently changed or used up. So that's the definition of a catalyst. And then how our catalyst works is over here. It provides an alternative reaction pathway with a lower activation energy, which means more collisions between particles are successful. Thank you very much.